Hi YouTube, how you doing? And today we're going to look at how to create a table with a primary key in SQL Server. I'm going to show you also how to add a primary key to an existing table and how we might want to add a primary key to a temp table. Really easy stuff, really important stuff. Jump to its chapter below that you want to go to. I hope you enjoy it. Hit subscribe for me and enjoy the lesson. Cheers. First up, let's create the table and the primary key at the same time. Creating the primary key at the same time as the table means less code. Creating it at the same time means we can name our primary key easily. Here, if we name it, we can have a convention. Here I'm using PK for primary key, underscore using the table name, and I've removed the underscore here, and underscore ID referencing the column the primary key is. So we can, of course, create it without this and rename our primary key later, but this is nice and handy. It's all in one script. It's nice and clean to do it. So here's the syntax. So first off, I'm going to run drop table if exists. So that confirms that if the, t if the table exists, SQL will remove it and we can recreate it. So here we go. I'm going to run that. If I refresh my tables here, you can see down here, I've got my primary key just there. And to go back to this drop table if exists, if I was to run this now, it would error, saying it already exists. Whereas I can include this in it and I can keep running it as many times as I like. With my primary key. So next up, we're going to look at creating our primary key after table creation. So your table might already exist and you want to add a primary key on it later on or you might just like to separate out your code and have your creation here and your alter table and add a primary key later on. So first up let's drop the table if it exists, create this and if I refresh these tables we can see there's no primary key. So to do that, I can run the alter table statement and say add primary key clustered. And once again, this is referencing this, but it won't have a name. It's absolutely fine to not have a name. It's just great practice to name everything. So SQL Server's created this name for us. As you can see, it's a bit random. So let's go through this again. still haven't got our key. What we're going to do is we're going to use this one this time. Similar to above, we're going to add a constraint. We're going to, that's the name of our constraint and it's a primary key clustered. There we go. And as I was talking about conventions, naming conventions, we can see here, error in my script, I've incorrectly named it. This tells us the primary key is against club when in fact we want it against ID. So in that case, I'm just going to rename this. I'm going to drop the, going to drop the table, create it, rerun this. And this should be correct. Now, with all tables, I strongly recommend we name our constraints with the exception in this case of temp tables. So my third and final one is creating a temp table with a primary key. Now creating temp tables with a primary key is an often overlooked performance hack if you do it correctly. However, if we name our primary key, it can cause routines to fail. Why is that? Because we're not allowed duplicate objects in SQL Server. So if someone's running a store procedure that names, that creates a temp table with a primary key, then it won't allow the same name to be created. So in that case, we let SQL create our primary key for us. To do that, we're going to drop if exists for our temp table. We don't need to look here anymore. We are going to create our table. And that should show up in tempdb under temporary tables. There it is. And to do that, we can have primary key clustered up here which you can do on standard tables, but here we're going to create it here 
and we've got our primary key unnamed now we can drop the table create it again and then let's say that we've inserted some stuff into it the code's gone in here we can alter our table later on should we want to and we can add our primary key again without the name and we can run it that way and that's how to create primary keys sql server tables and temp tables